Welcome back everybody. We're on part three of this super cheap Savage Arms rifle build. And as you've seen on the second episode of this series, this is where we got with the rifle um, with these really tall, uh, what are these, FX No Limit ring. We're gonna swap all that over in this episode here, so stay tuned. So now that we're back on this build, I've got a lot of things in the works right now. I got another buddy's rifle I'm working on. Um, keep in mind, this is a budget build. So we have a cheap rifle. Um, the most expensive thing is the scope. But let me pan over here and show you what I got from Amazon here. This is, like I said, budget. So keep that in mind for you. Light me up in the comments on why I'm doing what I'm doing because we are about precision. But this essentially is a cheap rifle build. So here I have west hunter now i'm not sponsored by any of these companies i'll be showing you today but i've never heard of this company it's on amazon these rings are like 28 bucks okay these are the cheapest rings i've ever bought and they are a 34 millimeter to dovetail 34 millimeter diameter to dovetail mount which is insane nobody makes that i can't find anybody that does that no like 419 nobody of these name brand companies are willing to do what they're doing here and at least if there is, I haven't seen it. If you know of somebody, put it in the comments. I have not seen that myself. But here it is. And the crazy thing, and I never knew this was really possible, although I, it makes sense, but I've never seen it in person or really ever, is these can be sleeved with these plastic adapters. So we've got 34 millimeter with no adapter. Then we have a 30 millimeter adapter, which is already inserted. Then we have the one inch adapter plates. You know, it's like, so one ring can fit all, which is ridiculous, really. But look how much meat you get on this surface. So here's my tape measure. I mean, we get an inch right there. That's a lot of surface for a dovetail. And they have the set screw. Now, the set screw is not pointed, but it doesn't necessarily have to be because it's probably an aluminum screw. It's just going to add some friction to the top of that rail and help pull up against this dovetail slot to make these really tight. I bet those aren't going to move really at all. So kind of impressed to be honest and they have a lot of uh i mean they're probably one inch wide as well but they're the surface area on top of the scope you know i got an inch and an eighth of course i'm uh, hooked on that little plastic sleeve which i don't know if you can tell it kind of protrudes out the side a little bit um but we got an inch we'll just say it's an inch of of width here you know a lot of times especially in your nicer scopes they're you know three quarters of an inch whatever so it's little things that may or may not make it better but i'm sure there's still some crappy rings we're not going to hand lap these because i don't feel like doing it i guess i don't know maybe i'm lazy but and then maybe i will i fight with myself a lot on these topics so i got my rings now these rings here we'll take you over to the rifle are going to be replacing what's all already on there the no limits to the picatinny so we're going to drop the scope almost an inch that's massive. That's going to be awesome. I bet you it's going to be an inch. So thank God, because I was not able to shoot this rifle. I didn't even try to shoot this thing. That's how bad it is. Okay. And I like to do a lot of dumb stuff, but I was not going to do that. So that came now this right here. I haven't even opened this up because I wanted to do an unboxing, which I get a little impatient on, but, um, I've sat on this stuff for a couple days. So you guys can only imagine my excitement. This right here is a cheap riser. Once again, the cheapest I could find on Amazon. I didn't want to go too cheap, but they all look like they're similar, just um, rebranded or renamed. So I just went, you know, I'm just gonna go cheap. I wanted the thumb adjustable screws, or I'm really not screws, but uh, nuts, hand, finger adjustable nuts. Um, they got what they call a carriage bolt right there, which is that square end. So we're going to drill and tap into this stock to put this on. That ought to get me the wheel that I need. I could probably make it work with the rings and mount that I got right now, but I don't want to do that because it's too tall. Then I've got my epoxy resin. Once again, went really cheap. This is some cheap stuff on Amazon. All of this came from Amazon. No sponsorships. And I bought a half gallon of it. So I got the epoxy resin. 
Then I got the hardener. I've never used any of this stuff, so we're just gonna figure it out together. I might make a mistake, but that's it's okay because if I can't get the rifle back out of the stock, well, it was gonna be a cheap build and it's probably gonna stay there forever, to be honest. I, I'd like to remove it, but if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Next and last, right? Yep, and last, I have got my Arca Swiss that I mentioned in, I believe, the second episode. Once again, this was really cheap on Amazon. I don't think it even cost $30. I don't know what it cost, to be honest. I can't remember. Um, this is going to give me that flat beaver front end that I need to slap my rifle on barricades to do whatever. So this is essentially the bottom. It's made for cameras, so I'm going to take these screws out, or I might just throw them into the stock and epoxy over them so they can have something to hold into. But that's really all this is, is this kind of a, this will be the flat end, I'll go up against the barricade, this will be the padded, we'll go up against the rifle because of the way the, dove, the dovetail is inside of there. That bottom is the lower end. So it'll also fit on my tripods, which I got way over there. So I'll be able to put this in a tripod. This is a 600 millimeter, I believe, or no, 200. 600 millimeters is really long. This is 200 millimeters, let's find out what that is. I did the math, it was like eight inches or something like that, yeah. So eight inches. And you can do that by, I think it's 200 millimeters divided by 25.4. We'll get you your US measurement. And we're going to sand the crap out of this rifle and put it here. And that actually won't look too bad. I wasn't sure how far, how bad it would look, but that's not too bad. So it'll probably look worse when I'm done with it. So that's what's gonna happen in this episode. All right, so we're back, a little update on the rifle. Um, I started taping everything. Got everything that I think is going to be protected. Um, we still got to do something about this yet. I'm not worried about that yet because I'm going to still put some tape on that. But just for the time being, I had to test fit it. Um, the stock added some tape down the sides to help protect it. Covered the whole thing in tape. The epoxy, per the instructions, I can pour it into here. Let it set for four hours, then embed my action into it. So that's what I'm going to do. Did drill a hole in the back of the stock right there to pour some in there because I'm probably not gonna fill it all the way full. Um, that's pretty much it. I got my epoxy right here, mixed and ready. They said to let it sit for five minutes, so before pouring, so we're gonna do that, probably to let it you know, get stable. And then we're gonna pour, let it sit for four hours, come in and embed this rifle into it, probably pull it out a few times as it's curing, which is probably gonna mess a lot of stuff up, I don't know. But that way I can hopefully keep it um, not stuck in there, I guess. I don't know. I just feel better if I get to move it around a little bit. We're also going to take this grease and we're going to coat the whole bottom end of this rifle and up on the sides a little bit with grease to help also give us another chance of getting this thing out of here. Because I really want to make sure we leave no stone unturned, but this is about the best I can come up with on doing this, besides paying somebody to professionally do it. And they probably wouldn't touch a rifle this cheap anyways. So. We got nothing to lose, it's a budget build. Don't get too mad. But yeah, that's all what's gonna go down here shortly. All right, so we're over here now where I got my gun vise and got it filled. It really did not take as much epoxy as I thought it would. This cup was about filled to the brim and I still got that much left after filling this whole void and almost all of this. When I put this stock into there, that action into that stock, I'm probably gonna have some seepage coming out. So that's kind of impressive. I don't wanna overdo it, <clears throat> but as of now, everything looks really good. So I am happy with that so far. Um, a little nervous, of course, but what else do you do? I'm gonna go coat the rifle in grease, let it sit, so in four hours is up, I can just come drop it into this action. But I mean, this thing looks nice, there's no bubbles, which I don't care if there's bubbles or not, I don't see any bubbles right now, but um, yeah. Pretty simple, straightforward. So, and I can see a lot of dust falling into it. But I wanna put, use that up, but I don't know where I'm gonna put it. So a half gallon, quite a bit. I didn't think it'd be enough, to be honest, so. Pretty happy, and it already added a weight 
weight to the rifle. So, you know, a gallon of water is like 8.13 pounds or something like that. So this is going to add, I don't know, you tell me. All right, so rifle is now in the action. I do got a little seepage, but because it's thicker, it's not coming out as quick around the trigger. So I got some rags in there just to kind of keep some pressure, keep it up inside there. Got it leveled out as best I can. Never did put tape on the fore end, kind of forgot. Of course, it's got to leak through there a little bit. So we're gonna let it sit overnight. It's gonna be like 45 degrees outside. It probably should be inside my house, but I'm just gonna keep it out here. We're gonna see how that does because I do not feel like taking that inside my house and having my son quite possibly mess with it. So there she is. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned for tomorrow. All right, welcome back everybody. So we have got this rifle, the red rifle now. This has sat for 24 hours at this point. It's probably 23 hours. And full disclaimer, I did pull this action, barreled action, out of the epoxy around four o'clock this morning because I had to go to work. I got excited and I wanted to make sure I could still pull this thing out and I did. And at that time, the epoxy was soft. You could push it and push it around, but it wasn't liquid form. It was kind of a gel. So 24 hours later, now it is in my barn. The barn is probably, what is it? It's 40, 50, 56 degrees right now inside my barn. So it's not truly the curing temp that they want. So it actually, to me, I'm not sure if it's gonna be cured or not. We're gonna find out, but uh, It's tight, so I can't really, I can kind of move the safety and I can kind of pull the trigger. You can tell there's some movement, like it's still kind of a gel, a hard gel, harder, before than I could pull the trigger pretty, pretty decently. So we're gonna pull this apart together and see what happens. There you go, you just seen I pulled that on the fast video um, right out of that, and that wasn't too hard, it was a little tight. Safety still doesn't want to turn. That's not a good thing. Probably means some stuff got in there. Hopefully that's not a big deal. We'll find out together, obviously. But here's what it looks like inside of this. You see that gloss there, right up in there? That looks really nice. And then all this is where all my grease was at, so it kind of looks a little filthy. But... You can see right there's where a pillar was for the action. Right there was another pillar. So it pillar bedded itself almost, even though the pillars are out. You know, a traditional pillar bed would, pillars would be stuck in there. So we're gonna remove all this tape, pull it off of everything. I got some sanding to do. I did get some, some uh, liquid down on the stock because I, what I ended up doing was I taped the whole stock off and I drilled a hole to pour some epoxy in here and I decided to not go that route. I just filled this whole void with epoxy let it sit for the four hours and just stuck the action into it and had to end up poking a hole in here to allow the trigger to come through and then also for my um, takedown screws. So I did all of that to get where I'm at now and that allowed some stuff to seep, nothing horrible. And this, this vinyl tape is coming off pretty well for having some residue and this is gonna be interesting here having some residue kind of stick to it like you can see here's some epoxy pulling with it that's all where my bolt goes so i'm gonna have to hollow that out i might just leave it and then take a file or a chisel or something and let it i'm gonna bring this inside the house let it harden up fully but i didn't want it in the house with it leaking all over the place my wife would not have been very happy with me so here's the rifle stock up close um, minimal, I'll call it damage, through seeping through the tape, but that was a really tricky area to tape. Um, you can see right where that trigger is at. It's a little bit there, it's gotta be cut out. I'm gonna let all the harden, okay? Right now it's kind of like a rubber. It's still a little pliable. All right, so a little update on this. Got the tape off, and I do have a little epoxy 
inside the trigger group, which is like the worst thing that could possibly happen. It's not very much, but there is some in there. And yeah, it's not ideal. Good thing is it's like a pin or two that holds the whole thing in. I can pull this apart, disassemble every piece. And quite honestly, it's actually coming off pretty easily with my knife as a scraper, but it's still um, pliable. It's actually just kind of rolling off as one big piece. So I'm kind of working it gently and trying to kind of peel it off. So it's gonna be a tedious project, but it did come in on the side where all these uh, springs are for the safety. I think that held the glue out or the tape out enough to where it didn't have a good seal. Even though I brake cleaned everything, you know, it's just not a perfectly smooth surface to adhere to. So I do think that was the reason why, because the other side turned out to be a lot better. So we're going to clean that up and I'll let you know how that goes. All right, so we just assembled the entire trigger. Not very hard, three pins to do. Didn't really want to do it, but it's actually not that bad. And maybe we'll improve it while we're at it. So I got the cleaned out while well, cleaning it out right now and then I've got kind of like my sear piece right here your trigger sits in there just like that and just kind of rocks back dropping that sear and then this is your spring I mean that's probably the simplest trigger I've ever seen so we might be able to play around with some trigger pressure by or pull weights by different spring sizes and stuff like that so it's something we can check out later. All right, so here is the rifle barreled action and bolt. Nothing got inside the bolt area. Um, I did rework the trigger a little bit, kind of smooth some edges. It did need to be deburred. It really, I didn't really do much as far as trigger pull, which I don't have a scale here to tell. So I'll get that actually tomorrow from a friend and I might try to see what this gun can improve on, but I don't know if I actually even will mess with it, to be honest. So here it is, trigger works. I'm gonna flip it off a safe. Nothing's in the chamber. So it works good. I mean, I can beat it up. It pulls really nice. I can, there's no hesitation, no slack. So yeah. So now we're gonna bring the stock into the house, let that cure, and then we're gonna finally, hopefully tomorrow, start putting all of our goodies on this rifle, my cheek riser and all that. Actually, that brings me up to another good point. Maybe tonight if I have time, because I've been mean, doing all this after working a full-time job, I might just fill a stock full of epoxy before I bring it in the house tonight if I got time and see how that goes over. You know, if it doesn't leak out of the stock, then maybe I can kill two birds with one stone. All right, so takeaway notes. If I were to do this again, what I would probably do to prevent what happened is I'd probably pack this full of grease. Even maybe your lightweight oil might have helped it because it didn't pull out very hard. Now, of course, it was tacky, so I caught it in time. It didn't harden. So that's part of the battle is catching it in the right time, too. So keep an eye on your projects. If you do it, I will probably do this again the same way again. I'll probably tape it. But this time, next time, pack it full of grease, tape it, which is not going to stick very well, and then grease it on the outside just to give us the utmost protection. Because a lot of other trigger systems that I've worked on are a lot more complex than that. So we got lucky on this. Um, and even if we didn't, we would have figured it out one way or another. So that being said, um, thanks for watching this video. We're going to have the next part of the series after this hardens where we're going to mount the scope. Uh, mount the accessories. I'm not sure which is going to come first, but it'll probably be one video, hopefully, if time allows. And in the meantime, I'm going to fill this stock off camera with some epoxy to kind of add some weight. So I've, if I had a scale, I would tell you what the before and after weight is, but I do not know. And I don't have a way to measure it. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.